In this video, I'm going to give you a general overview of different modified stem types. The first stem type that we're looking at here is a bulb, um, and they are true bulbs. Uh, and these are considered tunicate bulbs. Tunicate means that they have this papery covering on the outside that protects their fleshy scales on the inside. So here are a couple of things that I have that you're probably familiar with. We have a regular yellow onion. Um, this is a shallot. Uh, we've got a, clove, a head of garlic here, um, a green onion or sometimes scallions They're, or leeks grow this way too. Um, and then lastly, this is a daffodil. Uh, you'll see the screenshot that's on your PowerPoint presentation has a really good image of this. So I'm just going to kind of point at a couple of things. Um, oh, you know what? Do, 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 do. I can give you a background and then you can see it better. There, check that out. Okay, so if I make it like this, then you can see this a little bit better while I'm talking. Um, so this is a daffodil and I've cut it in half and you can see these papery scales. That's like the fleshy part that you eat. Down here we have this rounded structure that's a little bit harder. That's called the basal plate and it's where um, you get either a new shoot primordia or uh, root primordia. Then the roots are going to come out of the side here. You see these kind of yellowish knobby things right there. This is the new shoot that's going to come up and you'll get little offsets that'll form around these nodes here at this basal plate. The basal plate area here, that's what the actual stem is of this bulb. So these are really common and, and you can propagate these a couple of different ways. We'll show you a, a method today. Uh, with garlic, this is still the papery covering on the outside, so that's the tunicate, although it does break apart a little bit differently. These are called cloves usually, and you can see that when I broke that off there, I ended up with a little bit of basal plate associated with this clove of garlic. So this is our first bulb type, uh, and it is a true bulb with a tunicate. The next bulb type that we're going to look at is called an imbricate bulb, and an imbricate bulb is one that um, doesn't have that papery covering on the outside. So this is an Asiatic lily that I dug up. And these are all individual scales that look like they would peel off like a garlic, but garlic has that papery covering, so it's considered a tunicate bulb. This is considered an imbricate bulb. There aren't really that many types of plants that have imbricate bulbs. I'm not sure if there's anything edible that um, has an imbricate bulb, but most Easter lilies are propagated this way, and uh, same with the Asiatic lilies. So this one is an Asiatic lily. The next modified stem that we're going to look at is a rhizome. And for rhizomes, I have a couple of different things here. Um, so this is culinary ginger that you're probably used to eating in soups and stuff. Uh, and it grows very similarly to like an iris, or this is a canna lily. So a rhizome in general is a swollen underground stem that grows um, horizontally. So when this plant is in the ground, uh, this part would be flat, and then you have the leaves that grow up. Ginger is going to grow exactly the same way as an iris, so if you know how to divide an iris, you know how to divide ginger. You're looking for these little spots that will form new primordia, and so if you, if you want um, to plant this, what you would do is you let it harden off, uh, maybe you can just pick off these individual nubbins and then set them on the soil so that it's like not totally, you want to just barely cover these things and then it'll trigger, trigger root growth out of the bottoms and shoot growth out of the top. This is an example of a canna lily and you'll see a whole video of me digging up and dividing a section of these. We have to divide them every other year because they get really aggressive. So um, this is a two-year-old canna rhizome. The first year canna uh, is here, and this is the dead piece that's in the middle. To turn this into new plants, we're just going to pop off each of these little stem areas that has these root primordia already coming out of it. Uh, so this one, it looks like it's one plant right now, but we can actually turn this into one, two, three, four, five. We can turn this into five uh, canna plants. And then you plant them kind of however you want them distributed, and then in the next couple of years, you'll have to dig them up and divide them again. So those are rhizomes. Next, we're going to take a look at some tubers. So this is a Jerusalem artichoke, 
And then I also have some regular culinary potatoes here. Um, a tuber is going to be a fleshy, underground, swollen stem used for starch, again, just like a rhizome, but they don't necessarily have to be horizontal. And instead of just producing, um, like, leaf primordia that are going to grow out, this is going to grow a new stem out of it. So this is actually related to sunflower, and you can eat these tubers. They're edible and very starchy. Uh, each of these little eyes has the potential to become a new plant. And so we see that happening here with these potatoes. Um, all of these individual, all of these individual pieces. Ah, there we go. So the pictures of these um, that you look on canvas for in your um, PowerPoint presentation will be easier to see this too. But here are these little tiny pieces that would actually form new potatoes in this. And then the purple shoots are going to grow up to become the potato vine. And so that's just our, our growing potato. And here's what one looks like without those eyes growing yet. I mean, so we could cut this apart here and here and here. There's a bunch of different spots here that we could cut this apart to make... Um, whole new potato plants. So, you know, I mean, if you want, we, we should probably see, I think what we'll do for this experiment is we will see how much material you need with one of those eyes to get a successful potato plant out of it. So uh, then you know if you uh, need to save half of your potato for planting and half for eating, or if you can get away with just using a paring knife and cutting out these individual eyes with a little bit of tissue. I think that'll be a fun experiment. The next one that we're going to look at is called a corm. And for corm, we have um, something called a gladiolus. A watsonia is another plant that grows corms like this. Um, with a corm, you get these, these papery scales on the outside, but it's not... Those scales aren't persistent in here. This is a swollen base, not necessarily um, a fleshy leaf. So here... Um, this is the, the one that I just dug up fresh. This would be the old corm on the bottom. This one's not going to flower anymore. These are the two new corms that this plant has produced, and so we can split this apart and take off the old hat and then plant these individually, and they should grow up and flower for us. Whenever you do a cross-section of these guys, again, I apologize if this... I'm going to try to get it to go into focus. Ah, there we go. Okay. So here we can see the basal plate is just this little tiny piece down here. And then this is the new um, embryo that's going to send up our shoot primordia of our new leaves and then eventually our flower bud. And down here are our little root initials starting to form that will turn into our new roots. Okay. The last, uh, the last modified stem that we're going to look at is a stolon. And a stolon is an underground, well, sometimes they're underground, sometimes they run across the surface, sometimes they'll call them runners. Um, so these are plants that send their stems underground and then root at these individual places. So like here is one plant on a stem. I can cut this whole thing. Oh, this smells so good. This is chocolate mint. Um, so we can cut this apart into pieces. This already has roots all along this modified stem. So you just cut and kind of wrap around in a pot, and then you've already got a shoot, and you've got some roots to work with. So it propagates really easily. But plants like this can be a little invasive and tough to control just because it does root so readily. Um, other examples of plants that do this are like some sedges that can be very invasive. And then a lot of the mints do this in particular. Uh, strawberries send out runners. They are stolons that are above ground, so they're above the soil level, and we'll uh, see how to propagate those a little bit later on in the quarter. All right, thank you much. That has been your overview of different modified stem types.